There we go. We're live. <clears throat> hey, guys. It's Chris. It's Dave. We've got a special guest tonight. I'm going to let Dave introduce her. We have paranormal author. We have C.L. Thomas on here. And, uh, well, we all know as Crystal as well. She's a real good friend of mine. Amazing, amazing person. We've talked uh, over the past about different stuff in the paranormal field. Uh, she actually has a book. Well, actually, a couple of books. This right here. This right here is the oldest one, right? That's the newest one. Well, okay. so I published one and then I pulled it from the market and I'm about to put it back out in October. Nice. Later on that. So thank yeah, you guys for having me. Oh, yeah. yeah thank I'm you for excited. Coming. Thank you for coming on. Oh, yeah. She has some amazing stories, man. Amazing stories. Well, I'm ready to listen. So. <laughs> All right. Um, actually, just let's go ahead and dive into it. Um, uh, where originally are you from? Like the attachment where it all began at? Okay. Um, do you want to know where I, where I grew up, or so? Let's I start in- where you. Yeah, where you grew up. Let's start from the journey. Let's start the paranormal journey from the beginning. Ooh, exactly where. It's yeah. Started. Yeah. Well, for me, it started at age two. My my. One of my first memories, actually, is of me in the crib with a man who was a ghost standing in the doorway of my room. Ooh. And I called him Santa Claus. I don't know why, but he had um, a white beard and everything. And I guess the whole Christmas season in the mystery behind Santa Claus kind of made me think of that for some reason. But That's um, <laughs> I like it. So yeah, I would yeah. see weird um, lights in my room, that kind of thing. That went on forever. I had be- pretend, pretend friends, um, just different things. So I lived in Southside Pittsburgh. One day I was about five years old and I was home from preschool. And I was in my room sick and I was playing with those little matchbox cars. Do you remember those? From the 80s, like the Hot Wheels. And I love that stuff. I was such a tomboy. But I was sitting there playing, and I looked up, and there was a lady smiling at me at the end of my bed. And I distinctly remember her. She had, like, the horn rim glasses, was older. She had on this apron um, that was, like, patchwork, quilt work, I guess, apron. And I ran downstairs to tell my mom that there was a lady in my room, and I wanted her to play and my mom was like, well, there's nobody in your room. You're, you know, and I started crying, of course, and arguing with her. Later on, she asked me to describe this lady. And after I told her, she kind of got quiet and didn't ask me anything else about it. But then later um, that night, she pulled out an album book and showed it to me and asked me, is, is this the lady? And it turned out to be my grandma who oh, had passed no. before. I never even met her. And... Um, there's a photo of her, and I actually have that photo somewhere. And um, she had the horn room glasses, and she had the apron. Yeah, that's really cool. <laughs> that's, so just different that's, stuff. So uh, you know, basically, so you think that she was basically maybe your guardian angel type thing, maybe looking over you, or I mean, did she ever I feel like just checking in, just checking in, because I was sick and. I used yeah. to get pneumonia a lot as a kid, so I think she was just checking mm-hmm. in on me. Yeah, oh. making sure you were okay and everything. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Even though I never met her. It's just <laughs> She's trying to get to know you. <laughs> so as I got older, though, um, a lot of stuff started happening. Like, I was able to know stuff before it happened. Um, one particular instance is my great-grandma. Um, I went down and told my dad that I, you know, I think, I think Granny, her name was Nona. I think Nona passed away. You know, she, she was in my dream and she was saying goodbye. And sure, you know, my dad kind of looked at me crazy. We didn't really get along very well. It's a whole other story. But um, a couple minutes later, the phone rang and it was my aunt telling him about his mom passing away or his grandmother passing away. Oh, wow. so, just different things like that. Um, I had a girlfriend in high school who passed away, and I knew that she had died before I was told. 
So just little things. Yeah, you can feel that energy and stuff. Yeah. I'm the same way with that type of things. Like I'll be like, I definitely feel know that this person passed like at that moment. And yeah, it's pretty wild having that sensibility like that. Yeah. Um, just real quick, uh, everybody at home that's watching this on Facebook, make sure you click on the StreamYard um, link. It'll give StreamYard um, the ability to give us the ability to see who you guys are. Because all I see right now is just Facebook users. Um, so if you could just give uh, StreamYard the permission to uh, use your name. Yep, absolutely. So who we got on? We got Dave. What's going on, Dave? Jojo. What's going on, Jojo? Uh, Matt, what's up, man? Uh, really, that's all we see. Paranormal consultant. Hey, what's going on? Uh, yeah, the rest of them, like Chris said, yeah, do that. Put your name in there. We'll see exactly who's going on. Whenever you yeah. have crystals for uh, CEO Thomas right here. Come on, let's know. Let's go. Oh, thank you, Jojo. Appreciate it. All right. So, uh, all right. Um, let's go ahead and talk about, if you don't mind, Crystal, let's talk about your attachment, where it started at, um, the beginning of it. We talked about it, you know, a few times, uh, actually on your show. Uh, yeah. yeah. Tell people about your show first, and then we'll go ahead and just bleed into that right there. Okay. Well, I have my own show, Small Town Tales Podcast. And it's basically I'm trying to interview the smaller people that you never get to hear from in the paranormal field. So I don't really interview high profile people. I try to do the smaller people. I like um, that. I like that. That's awesome. Yeah, that is. That's awesome because, you know, uh, a lot of people out there, they, well, some people out there, they don't like to tell their stories because they're afraid of getting ridiculed or mm -hmm. made like, oh my God, you're crazy. You're crazy. <laughs> you know, all this stuff. And they get, they can reach out to you and say, hey, look, all right, all right, I need to tell my story. I'm tired of it. And they can come to you and explain everything, you know. And, and you have a, it's not, it's not a vodcast, it's a podcast. So right. they don't, yeah, they don't have to, well, right now it is, right? Right. <laughs> But yeah, yeah that means soon. Yep. So yeah, they can talk to you about stuff like that, and I know I've talked to you and you know off the record about different kind of stuff over the past, and it's like, uh, look, you know, guys, if you want to act, you want somebody to talk to that knows a lot about the paranormal field, this is the person you don't go to. I mean, amazing, amazing person. Um, and let's uh let's go ahead and bleed into that. Let's go ahead and bleed into your attachment, where it started out. You know, the old place you looked at. Well, I was living in Nashville, Tennessee, um, and I had a roommate at the time. We were renting out a house in downtown Nashville, and it turned out that this property was on the front line for the Battle of Nashville. So in my yard, I used to dig up Civil War bullets, and um, I have a little, they called it a four-pounder cannonball. Okay, yep. Now. Just different cool stuff relics um but you know we didn't think it was haunted or anything at the time um but it started with it's kind of hard to talk about it it started with just seeing little shadows and little noises and then it kind of escalated it was like you know before a storm that energy just builds you know how you can feel that transition until the storm hits. That's kind of what it was like over a six month period. Um, at the time I was, in, I was in school for a master's degree and my roommate was working full time. So we were pretty busy. I was doing a lot of photojournalism and this was right after Katrina. Yeah, it was right after Katrina because I was covering Katrina, um, the aftermath and doing a lot of interviewing with people who survived the storm and some that stayed there, that kind of stuff. Yeah. And of course, you know, I was doing a lot of ghost hunting down there. Um, so one strange night, I don't even know how it happened. I was, I met just some people that it really didn't know. I was hanging out with a bunch of people from FEMA and we went to a bar and I met some other people who one lady was a voodoo person or voodoo queen. And she asked me to go to one of her ceremonies, and I did. And I didn't really know any of these people. Um, word, to, word of advice, don't go to a ceremony unless you know the people. But 
they did this whole ceremony and she, you know, she said it was like a protection spell and that I needed protection, but it was just something weird about it. And so I left that ceremony just completely not me. It's hard to explain. It's just like something came over me. It was just not myself. Right. Yeah. Um, so, so whatever, so. it started really that with that moment somehow. I really can't put my finger on it. But when I went Same back so. to Nashville, I carried that energy with me. And it just kind of mixed in with what was already happening there. Right. So ba basically, you were a part of this ceremony. Uh, there's no telling what could have. I mean, they could have opened something up, like right. brought it out. And next thing you know, you're like right there. And it's like, oh, yeah, hey, oh, I like her. I'm going to go over yeah. to her, and, you know, and just I'm going to imprint myself on her type thing. You know, right. you know her energy, the spirit might have liked it. And yeah, yeah. very good possibility. Yeah. I mean, well, around, around that same time, though, I went to, I stayed the night at the Bell Witch Cave on another uh, investigation. I actually took a rock home from there and oh, put it on my desk um, in my bedroom. No, no, you didn't take a rock. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, boy. Tell me more. <laughs> okay, here we go. Here we go. We're, we're getting deep into it now. <laughs> The rock did have nothing really happened in the cave. Um, there was some little weird noises, but uh, I did some of the research on that cave, and it turns out that it wasn't even on the Bell's original farm property. It's really got nothing to do with the haunting hmm. at the Bell's property. Yeah. Um, the Bell's farm was actually 10 miles down the road outside of town, whereas the Bell Witch Cave is actually pretty close to town. If not right off of Main Street, actually, there's like a little farm there and it's back in there. But um, I think it was haunted, though, because of all the people that go there. And I'll, I'm saying this because I think this is kind of what happened to me. I was digging up paranormal stuff all the time and probably was in places I shouldn't have been. You know, I was it was almost like taunting spirits you know like yeah nothing's gonna happen to me i'm gonna take this rock out of the cave and take it home you know just stuff like that i was forever i need proof like i already knew it existed but for some reason you know i wanted it right. in my face mm -hmm. but you know that feeling he's sitting right there <laughs> buddy yeah buddy back there buddy the haunted doll yep. <laughs> you know you hear a fun fact about the, well not a fun fact but it's so it's it's cool that you brought up about the bell witch because uh, we were actually listening to you know morbid the other day you know the true crime podcast and um they the cave was actually it was actually a part of indian burial ground mm -hmm. right above it you had the indian burial ground this and that what, 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 i think they were called mississippi mound builders if i'm not right, mistaken. right. Mm -hmm. and that whole property there was actually rituals and stuff that were in that cave that they done in that cave and i think it also it involved there was other ones that involved voodoo then and hoodoo that they did in that cave i'm like whoa that's getting real deep whenever you just mentioned that i was like oh crystal come on man come on. <laughs> why did you take it why did you i mean you had to go in there you had to sign a waiver and all that stuff yeah uh, we did and there was yeah there was there was a person that actually took a rock out of there and the same day brought it right back because this person was involved in a like a car crash like like i think 10 hours after they took that and they didn't believe in any of it and the person told them was like no you can't take oh, i mean you could take it but it's all up to you man if you take yeah. it stuff after yeah, stuff happens. I mean, it's the same thing like the energy in hawaii and stuff they tell you not to take lava rocks and stuff like that and then they get haunted by a spirit or something like that yeah, <laughs> yeah. Pretty wild. <laughs> and, and I, I say it's 50-50. I mean, I'm still going to bring Rock home with me just to investigate it to see if something actually, if energy does transfer that way. I mean, I'm sure it does, but, like, it'd be cool to, for investigating purposes, like, in my home kind of deal, like, to prove that it, it can do that. 
So well, I can say I didn't feel like the haunting came from the rock, but I can say that I ended up breaking my ankle, Ooh. down on the stairs, broken ankle. I was in a car wreck, a um, little fender bender. And then I was diagnosed with cancer shortly oh. after. Yeah. So Dang. I don't know. Is it because of the rock? I do believe, though, that, well, we'll get to that. Yeah. It, that's, it could it be a coincidence or could it be the curse or leftover energy from it? I mean, put it, put it this way. For 30 years, if you come home, which I've mentioned it before, you know, I'm a broken record about saying this, but as soon as you uh, say 30 years, you go home, you sit in your favorite recliner, turn on the TV, you sit back. And uh, for 30 years, you do that. Whenever you pass away, why uh, why couldn't your energy still be left over on that object? I mean, that's the routine. Oh, it, it is. Right? Yeah. That does happen. People have documented that, like, uh, come in their house, they set their keys down in the same spot, same spot, same spot. One day they put it in somewhere, a different spot, or just leave their keys in their car, and they hear the sound of keys hitting the table. These people are still alive. It's just a transparent uh, residual energy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it definitely. I mean, it definitely happens, man. Mm -hmm. you know, like, I mean, is it a honey, or is it just leftover energy? Bingo. That's why we're that's why <laughs> be able to do it try to figure it out but uh <laughs> that's why we're doing this man that's why we're doing this so what made you move to las vegas oh that's pretty cool well um <laughs> east nashville is where i worked out of and as you know there was a big tornado there two years ago and so i lost my business in that tornado um I had two properties one in south nashville one in east nashville the east nashville properties obliterated the south Na uh, nashville one the house the roof got pretty damaged and i had a lot of trees down that kind of thing so i pretty much lost everything when i lost my business so i came to vegas because I, I had friends that work in the music industry here and i figured this would be a good place to restart and I'm pretty much doing the same stuff that I did in Nashville, just in Las Vegas, rebuilding my life. So. Yep. And uh, so you uh, and didn't you have some sort of something to follow you from there? If I'm not mistaken, follow you from like Nashville all the way to Vegas or it was, no, it was the other way around. So okay, okay, okay. short story, I visited. Zach Bacon's Haunted Museum about two years ago. And it was with my roommate. She's living out here, too. Um, she's not my roommate now, but my roommate from Nashville. We're, we're going on like 20 years of a friendship, pretty much. But, yeah, she thought it'd be fun because we kind of put the paranormal aside after the whole thing that happened in the house. Yeah. And... You know, I just kind of forgot about it. She doesn't want anything to do with it anymore. She's just completely done. But we thought it'd be kind of fun to go to Zach Bagan's museum, you know, just for the fun of it. We thought it was yeah. fake, right? Because it's a TV show. Right, yeah. Yeah, we went. We did the flashlight tour. Oh. And it ended up picking up a lot of... No, this was before. I'm getting them all confused. We did that later. Um, the first time we just did a regular tour and it was weird. It was really weird. So the divot box room, it's like when you walk in there, I just felt like this energy, like rolling around the room, like almost like a tornado kind of energy. It's like just going round and round and round. And if you've ever been there, the box is kind of dead center of the room. So you go in, they shut the door behind you and there's, like a little altar or something right next to the door in the corner. And then there's the divot box square in the middle. And it just felt like the energy was swirling around that. And I ended up getting pretty dizzy, thought I was going to pass out and I had to get out of that room. And when I got home, it was like, I started having dreams about it. Hmm. it kept me in this happened for like several weeks. Some, something started saying my name. I got grabbed in the bed, actually got tossed out of my bed. 
one night and I started doing research online. What is, cause I didn't know, really know anybody in the paranormal field at all. And there was a guy who had just gone there like maybe two weeks after me. And he was on there. He said he got spit in the eye. It was a uh, Chris Fleming about people. Oh, oh, <laughs> yeah. He was. Um, this was before he got big with his TV show and everything. But he said that he went there and got spit in the eye in that same room. And so I contacted him and said, "Hey, how did you get rid of it? I can't seem to get rid of this energy that I brought back." And he gave me some tips on what to do, and and it actually worked. Yeah. But yeah, it lasted two to three weeks. I wasn't getting any sleep. It was almost like the whole Nashville house. It was like, and I don't know why it had just waken all of that up again. Mm -hmm. Oh man, that's, I don't know. I don't know if I want to, you know, we talked about earlier. I don't know if I want to go to the museum now. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I've I mean, been twice. <laughs> oh, you have? Of course, yeah. I didn't know you went. I, I didn't know you've been twice. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of places people don't know I went. <laughs> what did you think of that people. museum? <laughs> what did you think of the museum? I liked it. Um, I mean, there's definitely a lot of residual attachment energy there, but you got to think of a lot of where these artifacts come from, you know, what, what took place, who was attached to them, that type of stuff. So, I mean, it definitely had a... A mind of its own and i just think uh, it's a lot of too it's it's too many entities attached um in one location if you know what i mean like right. it's almost yeah. like a doomsday yeah. ready to blow <laughs> right yeah i mean it was very tense it's hard to breathe i mean i've seen videos where people fainted going in there and stuff i felt a little dizzy like just in the, the first room you go in so yeah we went back and did the flashlight tour and if you have you done that yet, they basically nope. give you some flashlights, turn all the lights out and leave you on your own with a with ghost hunting equipment. Mm -hmm. And so I took a, a little EVP recorder and we actually caught a lot of EVPs from there. So really awesome. uh, did you get some class A, B or C's? I mean, was it mainly class A's or? So if you go to um, clthomas.org, I have posted those EVPs. I always worry about getting in trouble, though, so I don't really tell people <laughs> it's there. But they yeah, the I'll waiver. Post them there. Yeah. Well, I mean, as long as, as long as you don't sit here and like <laughs> oh, this was called at the museum type thing, you know, should be fine. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, man. That thing you sign is pretty brutal. <laughs> well, I'll probably, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's one thing I'm not, man, dude, I'm so lazy whenever I sign stuff like that. I don't even read it. I just, I just put my name on it. That would be why you've been sued five times, sir. There you go. There you go. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, What's man. Up, yeah, yeah. I actually sit here. There was a couple times I had to ask you, hey, dude, uh, can I, am I able to do this? <laughs> Chris was like, no, you, no, dude, you have to wait a certain amount. Bye, 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 bye. And he got in deep deep in detail he's my savior man sometimes <laughs> you just never know what some people you know what but yep. i did post the evps yep. there's one uh where my friend go. asked the haunted doll that's in there uh peggy um zach had put some rosary beads around her neck and she's behind a glass case now whereas the first time we went in there she didn't have all that and she was sitting in the chair out in the open um and my friend asked the doll, do you like your rosary beads? And the answer is, I hate those. And she's got a British accent. Really? But I, I did post that on a website if people want to listen to it. It's up there. Yeah, that's definitely going to check that out <laughs> for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Tell, tell you know, the people that are coming in, uh, mention the website again where they can go check it out. CLThomas.org. And it's under resources, I believe. The page I kind of hit it, so it's not like oh Zach Bacon's. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. So I don't yeah. get sued. <laughs> oh Lord, yeah, I totally understand. Oh, <laughs> guys, check this out again. This book right here, her new book that just came out. You got to check. Uh oh, wait, wait, I got to move my finger. See old Thomas, there it is. Check this out, man. I can't wait to dive into it. It's going to be so amazing. I can tell right now. I really appreciate it. Oh, and thank you again. Also, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. I got this cool thing. I got these too. 
Uh, I keep oh, the stickers. Oh, yes. those are cool. Podcast. Yes, yes. They get to go on my case. I'm going to put them in uh, my paranormal case. I really appreciate it. Thank you again for it. You're welcome. Chris, I feel bad you didn't get any. If you send me your address, I'll send you one. Oh, okay. That, that sounds awesome. I definitely will. I'll have to send you something on buddies or something. <laughs> we could do like a <laughs> send you a buddy shirt and a sticker. <laughs> <laughs> I don't so, have a buddy shirt. Dave, oh, please. I want a buddy shirt. <laughs> yeah, I will get you a sticker so we can put it on your head so that way you can have some hair. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, go ahead, Chris. Huh? I'm done. No, no, I'm, I'm sorry, Crystal. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. You were about to say something and you were rudely. <laughs> I can't remember what I was going to say. <laughs> Uh, he does that, and he uh, has that effect on people. He does. Every no, it's, it's it's that baldness shine. It's ricocheting off my uh, my laptop right now, and it's blinding me. So I'm just trying to <laughs> focus. Okay, so let's get professional here and move back to the show because somebody is like not joking. Anyway, okay, all right, all right. We're, good, we're good, we're good, we're good. So, um, have you ever what been to a location? I see you travel every you know travel every now and then to go to these cool places i saw a photo um uh, it was a black and white photo and you were, were you sitting on a porch or something like that i believe that was the pioneer saloon i had a photo okay. shoot there but yeah i go to a lot of different so i work i'm working on an art project where i'm going into these really remote ghost towns and old mining claims that are out there they're all over nevada in southern california and some of these places are so remote that you actually have to hike into them because um, you can't get a car into it. So That's really I'm cool. taking photos and I'm doing a lot of EVP work. I'm work it's going to be a gallery. I'm hoping it's going to be a gallery. I'm looking for a spot to hang it here in Vegas. But it's going to be a mixture of photography and paintings that I'm working on. And I'm going to hang a screen that so that people can listen to the EVPs because I've, oh. I've got a lot of EVPs from these places. Totally I used to think one. that the South, and it's interesting because I just had um, Shane and Josh on my podcast, The Searchers. Mm -hmm. Good and I was going on, you know, don't you think that the South has a lot of really dark hauntings? More so than the rest of the country, but now I'm kind of thinking I might be wrong on that because a lot of the EVPs that I'm catching from these mining camps, they're not very nice. They're like swearing at me and telling me to get out all the time. Yeah, Just yeah. weird stuff. So. Yeah, yeah, and the thing is, uh, you mentioned that you were at a location, just went out there and basically just taking photography, you know, doing photography and stuff, taking photos. And you had your recorder on. Mm -hmm. And out of the blue, you just got an EVP. I mean, yeah, you weren't investigating. Totally. Exactly. I wasn't even investigating. And I go into this, it was at Gold Point. There's a place called Gold Point. And there's a old miner's cabin there with an old, um, I forget the name of the game, but it's a like a card game or something. The table is still there. And it was, as soon as I walked in there to take the photo, it was the coolest shot ever. I heard on the EVP, get out in this mean voice. I mean, he sounds like he's growling or something at me to get out. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yikes. Yeah. I mean, you think about it, though. I mean, you go in this, you go in this location and these spirit, uh, well, spirits are, you know, these spirits are like, yeah, okay. I'm comfortable where I'm at. I'm not used to, you know, people coming in. Uh, if you're a negative or well, not really negative, but if you're sitting here, it, it you're sitting here at this location, you're a spirit, and you're like, yeah, I don't have any visitors, this and that, you're comfortable. Then next thing you know, this intruder comes in, you're like, what the hell are you doing here? Why are you here? Get out, you know, type thing. You know, that that's probably what it was, you know. Uh, I think that's interesting, though. You could sit here and just go to that location and nothing, and, and not investigate, but you're getting these EVPs. That is so cool. Right. Yeah. That's yeah. really interesting. A lot of that, it's like, you know, you're going somewhere new, so it's like a stranger walking into your home. You know what I mean? Like, what are these people doing here? I've never, I haven't seen people in forever. What the? <laughs> <laughs> Especially in some of the locations. Right. 
from what you're saying, yeah, hiking in and stuff. Like, people haven't been there in forever. It's crazy, but awesome. I'm jealous. <laughs> so, uh, so when are you going to take me and Chris? <laughs> when are you guys coming out here? <laughs> oh, we got to. We got to make it up there. That is the third time somebody's asked us to go to Vegas. Yeah. You should come. Uh, Devon, your saloon is pretty close and it's haunted. There's a lot of neat places around here you can go to. Yeah, there's a there's a couple of other locations out there that I know you mentioned in the past. Uh, you know, we definitely definitely got to hit up. Would love to do it. And I, I think one of them was uh, not well. It's sort of untapped. You know, you've been there before, but mm-hmm. it's at, it's not really out there type thing. So right, like, that, yeah, that would be real good to do that. Even you know, come down there, investigate it, and everything's cool and everything's, you know, sort of level. Maybe we can do a, you know, an event or something. Uh, I would love that. We may need to get a four-wheeler or something to get back, get the equipment in there, because you can't just drive. But Hey, I'm going down south here <laughs> soon, and I'm probably going to end up bringing my four-wheeler up here. So, hey, I'll just bring it up there with us. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That'd be a long trans- hike for everybody. Yeah. yeah. Woo, gas prices? Good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> You gonna tow that thing over there? Whew. You better take a two, two. Uh, I don't even know. Sell a left kidney, take a couple loans out. I don't know. <laughs> Dude, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. If I get a truck, I'll just throw it in the back of the truck, man. Strap it down, bring it up here. So well, there you go. There you go. <laughs> yep, yep. I'm doing it that way. So, uh, what location? I mean, over the years, just being in the paranormal field and uh, just being you not even the paranormal field. Is there a location that you would never go back to? Have you ever been scared? Like, you know, the only time I've ever been scared was in my house, my own house. When I was living in that house in Nashville, when I had that negative attachment, Mm -hmm. I don't know if it was just one spirit or I really don't know. I just know that, like it started small and then over six months, it just really escalated into where I was sleeping with the lights on every night. I was scared to even turn off the light. I mean, stuff was being thrown around. Um, it was growing you know, with your energy by the sounds of it. Yeah, it was, you know, I remember sitting on my bed one night and I had the lights on and I, you know how you can hear someone kind of shuffling around? Oh yeah. That's what I heard, like shuffling all the way across. I couldn't see them. I could feel them and it was just like this negative energy in that house and all these different things started happening. I was really depressed at the time, which I'm prone to get depression anyway, but I feel like the spirit, if you have negative attachments like that, they They play on depression. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. It definitely does. It feeds off of that. how it, I think it gets a lot of its energy. It wears you down to right. be more powerful, that type of things. Anytime I'm investigating a home case that involves something, everything that you're saying right now describes a, a demonic case. You know. Yeah. I don't know if it was demonic or the ghost hunting it's team negative. that was called in said it was. Oh, gotcha. Well, I don't even really like using the word demonic, to be honest with you. Uh, just a negative attachment. You know what right. I mean? I, I hate that word. That D word is just terrible. <laughs> it's overused. It's not used for what it really is. And it's, it drives me nuts. <laughs> so this ghost hunting team came in and they investigated a few times. Um, one of the times, the first time they came in, I had to go to New Orleans again. And I was down there for several weeks on uh, working, documenting stuff. And they caught all of these EVPs of little girls voices asking, you know, calling my name and stuff and asking where I went. Like, where's Crystal? Where's Crystal? I wish I had the EVPs. I'd play them for you. Um, And then it would be followed up with like a groveling man's voice. Like it was really weird because the whole time we didn't hear children or anything. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if it was like demonic entities pretending to be children is really interesting. That's what the ghost hunting group thought. I mean, that's exactly what I would have thought too. Cause you know, as we know, a little girl, know. I'm innocent, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> In that moment, like, Oh, it's a girl. Hey, come talk to me. Perfect. Yeah. There's my door. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, 
they, you know, it was little stuff like that. It wasn't, it wasn't negative yeah. for them until I came back and that's when it all picked up again. It would be hmm. just bad. Just, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. Both my roommate and I weren't sleeping at night. Um, it finally escalated. I think it escalated to the point where I don't know. I, I was like pushing people away from me. I was very, very depressed. Um, I actually thought about committing suicide and tried it at the time. Very it, was, it was really bad. Um, I think though we had a priest come in to try to clean the house. That made things a lot worse. It just went on and on. And then I think when I was diagnosed with cancer, that was the changing point. I really think that that energy caused me to get sick. I know that's like something said that's way out there to some people, but yeah, I just really yeah, think that. And I think it's very possible that something like that can absolutely cause something like that for sure. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's what we were talking about before. Crystal, um, Chris, it was basically the, basically almost the same thing that happened to me with the hospital is, you know, I, I was sitting here and I got, you know, obsessed with it. And next thing you know, this entity, I wouldn't say demonic, but yeah, I will say demonic. Well, I'll <laughs> say uh, non-human entity. I'll put it that yeah. way. That it came to me and I was like, yeah, you know, everything's fine. I'm having fun at this location. I'm investigating. Next thing you know, I just got deep into it. And this thing just attached itself to me. And that's whenever I went on a downward spiral, just like you were talking about, Crystal. Um, is I pushed friends away, family away. Mm -hmm. because I was so there with this location. But was it the location or was it the entity? You right. Know, actually, right drawing me in and uh the suicide thing too you know standing on the top of the roof of that hospital you know i could have ended it right then and there and it, it was just telling me hey do this do that blah 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 so i don't know i don't know it's it's definitely strange definitely mm -hmm. strange and for you know people out there in the paranormal field or not even in the paranormal field definitely get some uh, credible team that you know to go to these locations with because you never know what you can walk into mm -hmm. uh, you know 100 percent. You, you don't want to end up like what happened to me or what happened to chris or even chris chris has a haunted object that he walked mm -hmm. into <laughs> and know exactly how strong this object was yeah. and he went through certain events too so you never know it's dangerous it definitely is dangerous well you gotta think there's no i mean there is but there's no there's no guide real guidebook that tells you how to operate in this field or what you need to look mm -hmm. out for and what this and that you know there are a couple of books out there that says guide to ghost hunting or you know a bunch of different stuff like that but like None of those have scientifically proven that this is going to stop you from getting up as um, attachment or this is how to investigate. You know, there's no field, uh, field um, manual. Again, yeah, people do write those, but like, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's not yeah. like done by Harvard or whatever you want to say. <laughs> right. It's, it's still, you You want to you wanna know, you want to at least know some red flags. Exactly. They right. pop up. But uh, you need to sort of back up away from it. It's tough though, too, because like what may happen to me may not happen to you. You know what I mean? Like this, like this way of investigating works best for me because I don't have any negative stuff happens to me. But then I try it the day way and now I'm getting possessed. You know what I mean? Like right. I think well, it's, I think it's all of our energy. It's the way uh, a way we investigate it. I think it's you know, our all of our energy draws in certain spirits, I think. Let's try the Dave way. Dave way is always the bad way. Thanks, Chris. It's like Jersey Mike's <laughs> yeah, <the> Dave's way. <laughs> but I mean, you're right, 100 percent right, man. Because spirits or non-human entities or whatever right. you want, you know, put it, they could connect uh, to a person mm -hmm. that they 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 feel they're drawn to. Right. I mean, that's just uh, just like uh, say us right here. We're on the screen right now. Yeah, I, I connect with Chris. I, I connect with Crystal right there because it's just, I feel like they're good people. 
I mean, it's just like uh, with entities. It's like, oh, yeah, I'm going to go out there. Oh, yeah, that's a good person. I'm going to go over there and reach out. And, yeah, I'm going to attach myself to that person, too, because I seem like, you know, that's their energy. Their energy is the same as theirs. So. I think you you just said it, too. Yep. It's, it's whatever. Um, I'm a big believer in vibrations in the spirit world. And I really believe that it, it's based on the person. Mm -hmm. you know yeah. what level they're vibrating at yeah i mean yeah. it's just like mm -hmm. that and you know human self especially if you have you know medium abilities or psychic abilities and you know you're walking next to somebody and you just get a bad vibe you're like well that, that's a bad person you don't know what right, it is right. you just know that's a bad person <laughs> and i always say like you know it's a flow of energy like i'm like uh-uh i'm not sinking with that i gotta get away from that person yep. so so it's that and then it's i also think it's based on what do you believe too mm -hmm. you know what do you use to protect yourself you know everyone has their own belief system and things might work for one person and not the other you know maybe smudging the house doesn't work for somebody else who wants a priest in there i don't know right it's yeah 100 percent, totally agree uh we were actually talking about this the other day that uh, uh, like say my my house right here, my cottage, yeah, it's got activity in it. Uh, I bring a priest in to actually cleanse it. That might not work. It's gonna piss them off more than anything. Now, if uh, say hypothetically speaking, I bring a voodoo priest in or a hoodoo priest, maybe that will help out because that's gonna connect to whatever spirit or whatever energy is going on in here. There's no telling what kind of religion it will connect to. You know what kind of religion will help situations out? Mm -hmm. So, agree. Yep. All right. Uh, what about your book? What inspired you to do the new book, Speaking to the Shadows? What inspired you to do that? Well, this cabin, by the way, um, I actually stayed in that cabin. That's a that's a real place. It's oh, really nice. interesting. It's in, it's in the south. What part of the south? I, well, you don't have to say exactly where, but what part of the south, maybe state or close state or something like that, where it occur at? Um, it actually it's Oak Alley Plantation. Okay, Oak Alley. Yes. Yeah. So it's kind of based on true story, but not really. So I, I took a couple of different stories that I've heard while uh, during my time down there and kind of put them all together into one story. So it's bits, bits and pieces from different locations. Nice. There's one story of a voodoo queen though, who died. It's not Mary, Maria Laveau. It's not her. It's, it's another not. one. And she said that when she died, she's going to take the entire town with her because of what happened to her ancestors. I've heard the story. I have too. I heard it. I heard it the other day on morbid. I heard it the other, other day. Oh, I can't remember her name. It started with the J, I think. So I can't remember her name either, but it's based off of her. And it's also based off of Oak Alley because there's a lot of weird, strange tales regarding that property as well yeah. with the whole slavery and the things that's gone on there. So when you look at a, the history of a place like that, I think, um, when it was up and running a full scale sugar plantation, they had about three to 400 slaves running this place. And where they stayed was um, on the backside of these properties. And every, most of the plantations are set up the same down there. You have your main house, you'd have like a little kitchen off the house. And then the slave quarters was actually maybe a mile or two away in most cases back by like the swamps or whatever. Mm -hmm. The way they would build these plantations is they would fill in swamp land because um, they were using the water and stuff for the sugar plant, for the sugar rows. You guys been down there, you know what they look like, right? Yeah. 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 But so they would fill in these little areas and they would kind of put them toward the back and they would live like maybe two families in a very small one room cabin you've seen those before yep yep absolutely yep. so i mean it's sort of like uh what the shotgun houses um yeah you know, almost like that yeah 
Okay. But the shotgun house, um, they're very they're kind of upscale compared to what these slave cabins were. I mean, these slave cabins were basically just. Yeah, and they looked the same. All of yeah. them looked the freaking same. I mean, yeah, and they would put them in rows, you know, next to each other in the back of the property. Yeah, it's so wild to me. Yep. If you have 300 slaves and you're living in those close quarters like that, you know, they're trying to raise their kids in, in these kinds of situations. I mean, think of what their life was like. Yeah, I'm sure it was rough. Oh, yeah, my God. Absolutely. absolutely. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of them that didn't even have chimneys or anything that, with the heat. I'm, I'm, I'm right. saying, how, Body heat is how they did that, man. Body heat. Yeah. <laughs> how, how do they stay warm? Body heat. I mean, <laughs> I'm being honest with you. Yeah. Yep, because back then, no, I mean, they didn't have insulation in these places. It was just this wooden cabin, and it was probably, you know, you walk in and bam, it's just a living room. That's all you really have. No restroom, no, nothing, this and that. I was like, okay, right. yeah, they were roughing it, definitely roughing it. Yeah, <laughs> but if you're in that situation, you're working from sun up to sundown, mm -hmm. and, you know, you're in slaves. How do you think you're going to respond to that? Your your religion's view, your ancestry is all different. Of course, they're going to, you know, that's the only thing they had that yeah. they felt like they could control. Mm -hmm. So I really tried to bring that out too in the story. Yeah, yeah. And guys, 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 let's go back again. I know she uh, showed the book earlier. You got to check it out. Speaking to the shadows, got to check it out. Check it out. Can't wait to read it. I suck at reading. I ain't gonna lie to you. I do. <laughs> I, I still get it. But this right here, I was so excited whenever I saw it in the mail. I was like, ooh, what? What? Ooh, book. Okay, I'll read it. <laughs> I'll totally read it. Totally read it. And uh, where, where can people find this at again? Go ahead and mention that. Amazon. It's it's available on Amazon. Nice. Oh, yeah. You don't have an audio book, do you? For us slackers. Oh, my like God, you. Dave. <laughs> no. <laughs> Don't worry, Dave. One of us will call call you and read it to you. <laughs> <laughs> I totally set myself up for that. I totally did. Oh, but uh, what about your other book? Dancing with Demons is the name of it. And I got to tell you, every time I pulled that one from the market, I didn't feel like it, was, it needed more editing and more work. It didn't really say what I wanted it to say. Oh, okay. Um. But also, every time I work on this thing, it's about what happened to me in Nashville and negative attachments. Yes. Every time I work on this book, like I was working on it last year, and I don't know, it's like the same kind of energy just overtakes me. Just even thinking about it and stirring all that up again. So, I, you know, I have to put it aside again. And <sighs> Yeah, I remember you telling me about that, man. I was like, you, you were telling me that every time you try to mess around with this book, something would happen or something like that. And you just, it's, it's like, it makes you feel like you, something is there like, oh, yeah, you got to stop this right now. You can't keep on doing this, you know, which is definitely interesting. It definitely is. Yeah, and, just, uh, it's weird. Yeah. I'm definitely putting it out again in October, though. Oh, so, no. um. James Anito with Duo Demonology is going to write mm -hmm. to forward. Oh, so okay. Talk about that. Yep. Nice. Yeah, I know James. He's a good friend of mine. <laughs> yep. Good guy. Going to be with him this weekend, actually. <laughs> cool. <laughs> so, um, when there, have you ever, I mean, going into locations, uh, do you have any paranormal equipment that you take, or is it just your camera? I mean, Whenever you go into the locations, what do you take with you? I mean, whenever you feel like you want to investigate. Um, usually I take a spirit box. I really like the spirit box because you can get direct answers most of the time. Mm -hmm. um, I take a little recorder with me, EVP recorders. Um, I had a Ren pod somewhere that I used to take, but, you know, just normal stuff. Yeah. I don't do a lot of camera stuff because I've always been camera shy. No, gotcha. <laughs> I used oh, to be like that. You shouldn't be. You shouldn't be camera shy. <laughs> I have been taking the little cat balls, um, the little light up cat balls. Oh, and yeah. I've taken those to, um, I stayed at the Armagosa Hotel recently. 
the Opera House. And I tried those there and yeah, that place is weird. Have you guys been there? No. Place is weird. <laughs> I'll have to check it out. I'm always <laughs> uh, up for a new location. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, the, uh, there was a place that you were talking about close to Vegas that we were supposed to go to. Uh, what? You don't have to mention the name right now. I'm trying to think of what it was. It was like uh, not not the saloon. It was something else. But anyway, I'm trying to think. Uh, oh, I know yeah. which one it was. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you had experiences at that place before. Is that correct? Or okay. That's correct. What kind of experience did, did you have there? Um, if it's a place I was thinking of, it's a ghost town that's very yep. well traveled, actually. That if you're going to a ghost town, this is the place you go to when you come to Vegas. And it's a little town. Um, all the structures, like the structures are still there, but they don't have roofs and that sort of thing. So it's kind of cool to walk in there and look at all the leftover buildings and banks. There's an old jail there. Ooh, there we go. Um, that place I caught a ton of EVPs from. And you wouldn't think that you would because, again, it's like a tourist destination. Everybody goes to this place. Mm -hmm. Right. But, yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah that's, that's the place we were talking about. And, Chris, I mentioned to you, oh, God, it was a while ago, to uh, actually go out there, you know, investigate it and maybe hold an event there. No, oh, okay. What was, yeah, what she was telling me, man, I, this place right here seems like it's going to be amazing. Amazing. That's pretty cool. Another yeah, like place too. It's like two hours from here. Um, not, it's not Goldfield. It's Tona. And there's a hotel I stayed at there, the Mitzvah. That place is really haunted. And the faucet kept turning on all night. I got my name called all the night several times. At one point, I get mad and slammed the, the bathroom door shut because I just to get to the I was tired. <laughs> And the next morning, it's one of those really old doors that latch when you shut it. Yeah, it was in the morning. I wish they had a camera on it, but I didn't. That is, I feel like that Mitzvah Hotel might have a lot more activity than the Goldfield Hotel. Oh, I got you. Who's here for that event, awesome. event going on in Goldfield? Um, the cemetery there, the Goldfield in Goldfield? Yes. There's a big cemetery there. And I checked that out right before the event. And the first thing I picked up was this like a girl, a young girl. She was probably 21, 22 years oh. old. Um, and I saw her, you know, and felt her like all the way across the cemetery. So, and it's a big cemetery. So I walk all the way over to where, you know, I, I picked up on her and there was a grave with her name on it. Nana, I think, is what it said. And it said that she was a suicide on her, which oh. it's kind of ironic that, you know, I was drawn to that anyhow, you know. Yeah. With my background in history, I'm drawn to this girl who committed suicide. But I started digging into her story because I felt like that's what she wanted. And it turned out she was a runaway from Texas. And that's not even her real name on the grave. It's the family changed her name because they didn't want anything to do with her. It was like such a bad thing. And the reason why she ran away is because she was in a um, one of those arranged marriages. This is like 19, 1906, 1908. Yeah. Yeah. Um, she was in an arranged marriage. She didn't want to marry the guy. Ended up running. Somehow she ended up in Tonopah in Goldfield as a prostitute. Family disowned her in just a sad case. Yeah. Really sad case. Yeah, that but, is. I've been working with the historical society there. Um, there's times that they may put her real name on there on the on the grave site. So yeah. we'll see where that goes. That's horrible. Oh, wow. Yeah. That is horrible, man. Jeez. Yeah. Couldn't even imagine. I Just mean, real quick. Hey, Dave, five minute warning. Nope, oh, five minute warning. Okay, let's go ahead and get into it then. <laughs> All right, tell tell everybody where they can find you again, 
and anything going on you have in the future, anything you can want to promote, put it out there. All right, you can find me at cons.org. Um, pretty big on Instagram and Facebook. Um, and that's it. I'm working on a documentary right now um, in Colorado, Arizona. Mm -hmm. And I'm working on that new book, Dancing with Demons. It should be out in October. And I have some other side projects like the art show I'm working on. Yeah, you can definitely look her up on Facebook, man. She, uh, she's got a lot of stuff going on also with the photography wise. And yep, here we go. Put it up again. There it is. There it's it is. <laughs> you got to check it out. You got to check it out. It's, uh, you know, as soon as I saw, I saw it. And she was talking about, yeah, well, on here is talking about a town curse, blah, 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 this and that. In the South, I was like, okay, that's it. I'm done. I've got <laughs> to read about this. You got to read about this. It's not just me being homesick from being down South. It's because no. hey, all kinds of stuff happened down in the South. It really does. A lot of no. curses and paranormal events that people haven't tapped into because, hey, they, I mean, most everybody was like, oh, yeah, the North, the North, the North. No, South's got some crazy. Crazy crap. Yeah, they got a lot of crazy stuff going on down there. Yeah, yeah the South is wild. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. 100%. 100%. <laughs> and, uh, but Thank yeah, you guys uh, for having me. Yeah, I'm glad you came on. I'm glad you came on. Yeah, I was happy to finally meet you. And yeah, it was wow. awesome. Can't wait to have another uh, talk as well. Bring you on and talk more about your books. Get more into depth about it as well. Yeah, absolutely. And we got it. And also, we'll check to trying to do that van over there you know us getting together do an investigation and maybe do a live feed you guys to come out yeah forget vegas there's so much else out oh there. yeah i don't care about vegas <laughs> yeah the outskirts stuff i I've, I've been there you know a handful of times like i said it's i don't care about it <laughs> <laughs> well the good thing is chris where the location she's talking about is outside of vegas so that's what i like <laughs> there you go. Oh, <laughs> uh, but um, all right. Well, thank you again, Miss Crystal. And oh, I'm sorry, Seal Thomas. Remember that name. Look her up on Facebook. Amazing, amazing person. Uh, I want to go ahead and put it out there before we get off. Uh, also, check out Get Haunted, the Get Haunted crew over there. Um, go to the Get Haunted page. They have the Shanley Hotel. They have uh, SK Pierce. They have some locations coming up. If you would like to do a paranormal investigation, hook, you know, check it out. And they got some real cheap prices on these investigations. Be a ghost hunter for the night. And, uh, yeah, that's basically about it. Okay, Chris, Sleepy Hollow. Bring it up. Let's Sleepy do it. Hollow, October 22nd uh, this year. Tickets are available at that link below. Um, you can snag them there. We are almost sold out of, I think we have like four <laughs> vendor spots left. And, we have like 10 VIP passes left, um, but general mission is wide open. Um, yeah, make sure to grab those tickets. Yep. And that's really about it, huh? Chris, anything else to promote? Crystal, you have anything else to promote? Um, I just want to leave one thing. If you're going to go ghost hunting, just keep in mind that attachments really do happen. And I just read this little thing. I know it's, it's like... Um, a little Christian, but it says Satan like a fish or bait to so accordingly to the appetite of the fish. So just know that if you are going to be going to and it's going to go after your, your weakest vices and you know, be mindful of that thing. You're going out. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Absolutely. Like you said, Chris. Um, uh, Never know what you're going to walk into, man. You really yeah, don't. like a box of chocolates, my friend. <laughs> 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 Sorry, I had to. Yep. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you for joining us, everybody. Thank you for watching at home. I hope you guys all have a wonderful night. Thank you for another awesome podcast on the Tonic Network. Have a good night, guys. It's <laughs>